What is up? Welcome back to another edition of OM Spirit Twitch Stream. Normally it's a Thursday Twitch Stream, but we're doing it on Wednesday this week as we have got Ole Miss headed to Baton Rouge for the Magnolia Bowl. We've got number nine taking on number 13. Rebels looking to uh, get to the bye week unscathed once again improved to six and one and uh lsu of course looking to keep pace with everyone else in the sec after uh losing that opener to sc and um got out alive against south carolina with some very controversial penalties that really helped the tigers and then they had a couple non-con games to kind of get tuned up in a bye week. So <clears throat> back-to-back conference games on the road against someone coming off of a bye. So learn a lot about the Rebels here as, uh, yeah, 0-8. Ole Miss is 0-8 in the last 16 years in Baton Rouge. Have not won since 2008 when Jevin Steed and company put up 30 plus. Kind of shocked everybody. Jevin Steed and company came out and just kind of punched LSU in the mouth. I kind of have a feeling that that's possibly how Saturday might go. I think Ole Miss's defense is the absolute difference maker for this one. Um, that front seven for Ole Miss is, is going to be crucial on, uh, on Saturday. Um, Nussmeyer has gotten better as the year has gone on. Ole Miss's offense, or LSU's offensive line has only given up two sacks, but something's got to give uh, as Ole Miss brings in the uh, statistically the best front seven in the nation with uh, 24 sacks to lead the country. So um, I'm excited to see uh, how Pete Golding attacks this, uh, this LSU offense. So prime time, like I said, 6.30 kick. It's going to be on the same time as Ohio State, Oregon, which is a bummer. But, yeah, you need to have those multiple TVs handy. A um, lot of really good games this week. You got Florida, Tennessee. Um, you've got Red River Rivalry. Uh, it's going to be a really, really, really good week seven. So um, a lot of marquee matchups. Uh, you got the rivalry game with Ole Miss LSU. Um, so it's going to be exciting week seven for sure. Uh, but we're here to talk about this one, Ole Miss LSU. Um yeah, I I think this is uh this is one where the uh, the Ole Miss Rebels are are you know blood in the water you know land shark type stuff. But I think it's more blood in the water for just the sake of the psyche of this team, where they're hungry to keep proving a point. They're hungry to keep proving people wrong. And I think that um that's that's pivotal for this team, right? Because it's it's almost like you got to go 1-0 and every week. That's what they always say, but you almost got to win out. I, I do think 10-2 and two still gets you in, but uh, you don't want to leave that up to chance in a very winnable game. And uh, what I think is a really good matchup for Ole Miss, great open field tackling there on that first opening drive, force a punt. Um, I do think it's a really good matchup because Ole Miss is a, um, an offense that has generated explosive plays all year. Uh, they're number two in the country in explosive plays. And LSU's back end is in the hundreds in terms of pass efficiency, uh, pass defense efficiency. Um, so I'm excited to see what Kiffin has schemed up for this week. Um, you know he's got some stuff that he's kept in his back pocket for a certain game like this. Um, not to mention that... LSU's down his best pass rusher, Harold Perkins. He, he's, he's playing in this game, um, but he's not playing on Saturday. He's out for the year. And um, you know, this is going to be a big one for, for the 
for the Ole Miss offensive line that's, you know, taking some taking some licks these past couple weeks. Um, Kentucky whipped them, hit them in the mouth, and um, a little bit better against South Carolina. Um, but, yeah, I think, I think this is a big game for the offensive line to kind of solidify some things and, you know, hey, we can get it done. We can run the football when we need to run the football. I'm really intrigued to see what the, uh, what the running back room looks like on Saturday as well, too, because Matt Jones is probably not playing. Um, so, yeah, I mean, what's, what's the run game going to look like? What's, uh, you know, we finally going to see Wesley Spintley with some meaningful snaps. Um, so it's uh it's kind of I mean this is kind of what all these games are going to be like from here on out, right? I mean there's no more non-con. It's all SEC, so it's it's a lot of meaningful. Off the play fake, looking to throw. He's running out of time here. Uh, had him over the middle, Daquan Wright. Um, yeah, you, you you want this, right? I know everybody was just huffing and puffing about the first four games and. They weren't meaningful. They're, they're non-conference opponents that are just cupcakes. This is what you want, right? This is what you live for as a fan, where your team is in the top ten again and you're playing meaningful games. I think that um, this is, you know, as a as a player, it's what you it's what you sign up for. It's why you play in the SEC. But as a fan, I mean, this is it's what you live for. Your team is nationally relevant, competing to get into the college football playoff. And, um, you know, you've got everybody, everybody that's anybody this weekend is going to be watching Ole Miss LSU. Um, it's interesting because it's, it's a very different LSU team. It's, it's not the LSU team that people are used to. You don't have the marquee names in the secondary. Uh, you don't really have that big running back that um, LSU typically has. Uh, I mean, you know, heck, the, the starter that was going to be on the team this year is now at Ole Miss, um, Logan Diggs. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm intrigued to see what this uh, what this what this game's going to look like. I think Ole Miss is going to really need to come out quick, fast start, take the crowd out of it early. But it's it's funny though. We we were just we were just recording hit that line and I think it's it's you kind of have to remind yourself as an Ole Miss fan you know I've, I've covered this team for a long time and it's a very different year now where you come out you go three and out early you know whatever it's not the end of the world because of the offense you have, or the defense you have, excuse me. Um, you saw it You saw it in the Kentucky game. I mean, I think, obviously, you had the fast start, but then you had a couple three and outs. But as the defense got settled in that game, they were getting you the football back plenty. I mean, they were, they were trading blows with Kentucky and were getting stops. And I think that that's what's so big for Ole Miss on Saturday is to – Make sure that you continue as Jordan Watkins gets Ole Miss on the board here. Just a methodical drive. I mean, I'm just in the middle talking about this game here and uh, I mean, just monologuing here as we march down the field. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that the ability for Ole Miss to generate explosive plays LSU's inability to stop explosive plays and then just the the matchup of all matchups with the Ole Miss front seven versus LSU's offensive line that has protected Nussmeyer well all year. Um, I mean, LSU threw everything they had at Ole Miss last year and still couldn't get the win. Um, and that was with Jane Daniels, the Heisman winner, and two NFL wide receivers. So it's... Uh, you know, how's this going to look this year where you think easily Ole Miss has a better defense than it did last year? 
and you got a quarterback that's in his third year, um, a very deep and experienced Ole Miss team. Um, we talked about it on our show with just how old this Ole Miss team is on both sides of the ball. Um, I mean, there's only one guy on offense, Cade Lee, that's younger than a junior. And then on defense, it's just uh, and Perkins. That's it. Everybody else, all upperclassmen, all guys that have played a lot of football. So I think that's going to be big for Saturday and taking the crowd out of it and just kind of staying locked in and you know, blocking out the noise literally and figuratively where you've got a group of guys that have, that have been in these games. You know, Jackson Dart's played at Kyle Field and you know, Ole Miss has played at Alabama. You know, a lot of these dudes, you know, Walter Nolan's played in big games. Princey Mommy Ellen's played in big games. Um, you know, the Washington guys played in the national championship last year. Um, so it's, I think that's an added element to this game that I don't think gets talked about enough. That, you know, this, this Ole Miss team is, is old and it is not, I don't think it's, it's not, it's not a group of guys that are going to be shook by the environment. And I know everybody wants to talk about Death Valley and how loud it is. And, you know, hey, look, everybody's loud in the SEC. Um, but yeah, I think Ole Miss comes out and punches them in the mouth early and can really make things difficult for Nussmeyer and the offense. And look, I think that's also key here where. LSU can throw the football well and has done it all year, but if you get into predictable throwing downs where you can pin your ears back, great pick, Kari Coleman there, just sinking back in there. Like that's that's what you want to see on Saturday, right? That's kind of what I'm getting at here. Is if you get LSU in predictable throwing downs, force them to have to drop back and throw where you can just have the guys pin their ears back and get after Nussmeyer and then you your 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 secondary your you know that you know it's coming. So just sit back and make a play. Um I think that's big for Saturday. And Ole Miss's defense has been as good as anybody so far this year. I don't think that's talked about enough. I mean it's probably one of the better defensive lines in the country. Probably one of the best units and then the front seven collectively is is definitely one of the better ones in the country. As uh, we're going for it, I, I trust the defense, and see if we can get a screen pass here. There we go, Rashad Amos. I wonder if we're going to see him. You know, Matt Jones is out. Um, you know, Parrish is banged up. He's going to play, and you got Bentley. I mean, what's the deal? You're going to you're going to use Rashad Amos. I mean, it seems like they're 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 pretty set in their ways on using JJ Pegues in short yardage. But I do wonder if we'll see more Bentley and Amos because at this point, Parrish has got to be spelled by somebody. And if Matt Jones can't go, it seems like it's got to be Bentley, right? So, really controlling the clock here in this drive. Crucial third down play coming up after that run. Pressure is coming. Grab behind the line. Oh, you got to get Daquan Wright more involved. I think a lot of people key on pre scoring. I mean, put those two, put, put those guys out there at the same same time. Make those linebackers account for both of them. It's only going to help the underneath stuff, the intermediate routes with Watkins and Caden Lee, and just. You know, try to expose some mismatches. And uh, I think da I think Daquan Wright's definitely somebody can do that. Oh, two scores. If you do this on Saturday, everybody, that, that stadium's going to get real tight. Get them, like I said, man. Get them in predictable passing situations. Do that, and it's a recipe for success. Because Pete Golding's going to be ready, and they're going to do some, some schematically. They're going to they're going to get after him, and they're going to do some stuff to confuse Nussmeyer for sure. Back onto the field. 
This offense trying to bounce back the last possession and then in a pick. Grab down the middle. It's Daniels. Ah. Defense finally brings him down, but a nice chunk play. Boy, it's great to see this quarterback from LSU make that throw and put it right on the money to pick up that first down. And I think that's the big thing that LSU fans want to see is consistency from the All quarterback right. position. There have been moments where you've seen that. There have been other moments where they've been asking for more out of their quarterback. So you had the Walter Nolan was all over that screen pass. All over. No chance. That's just that's just doing your that's just doing your homework, getting in the film room. You become a complete package and a real threat in the SEC. Caught over the middle. It's Thomas. Oh, and he breaks free. It's a foot race. They're not gonna get him. He's in. Touchdown, Got caught Tigers. going for the hit stick and missed. It's all right. Now they line up to kick the extra point. Oh, we still got a full two minutes for the half, and we get the ball. PAT is good. Right, right. Ball. Let's get it back to 14. All right, let's do it. Out of the back of the end zone, the offense will start at the 25. And the Rebels offense back out on the field. They punch it into the end zone the last time. Let's see if this defense has made some adjustments to stop them this time. And it's incomplete. That was on me. Overthrow. Just too much on that. A little late. A little late. They don't make the completion here. The timing seemed to be off between a quarterback and receiver. But man, this defensive coordinator, he may want to have considered getting more pressure on this quarterback by changing some things up. He got a lot of time back there to throw the ball. And eventually. Harold Perkins, you better, you better bring your bring your lunch pail, son. Alright. Let's keep it simple here. Let's move the chains. Can he make it to the marker? Call a timeout here. Get a breather. I guess everybody gets a swig of water. Chris, how about that by this running back? Got behind his pads and that big offensive line. All right. Able to pick up that first down. He Flip just kept here. pushing through that line until he got to the mark. Play action here on first down. Takes a shot as he lets it go. It's a huge game. He's got it inside the third. <laughs> Finally brought down, but that play moves the ball. boy. Juice. I'm, I'm excited to see. Uh, I think Trey Harris is going to absolutely give it a go. There's no way he's sitting out a game that's in the state of Louisiana. You know he's wanting to play, but uh, I think they're going to definitely key on him. So I'm ready for Juice to be a bigger part of the, the game plan. And I think that the other guys are going to need to step up. Jordan Watkins, Caden Lee, going to need to get some some big catches, extend drives. There he is. Got him. Well, that's a thing of beauty right there. Good job all around. Offensive line gave the quarterback enough time. Clockwork. What a two-minute drill. With this receiver running a route like this, Surgical. It's pretty simple. All he had to do was get his head turned around, catch that football. He's already in the end zone for the touchdown. Extra points. What's the up? Minute four, seven plays. Easy. Now the kickoff. We'll see if the defense can get a stop and preserve that. Probably going to bring it out. Probably going to bring it out. Yep. Fielded in the end zone. It's Jackson. Nope, running backwards not going to work. Let's keep bringing pressure. Let's try to get another pick. Let's try to get a turnover. Ah, oh, Princely. Big thing about Saturday, too, I think that uh, was such a big part of last year's game is the quarterback run. You know... Jane Daniels was as good as anybody, being elusive, creating off-platform stuff, you know, extending plays. I mean, Nussmeyer is not a statue, but he's not nearly the athlete that Jane Daniels is. So I think this this front seven is going to really make his life hell. 
moves his way for a first down to the 35. That's where you, you know, people haven't been able to get to him this year because the LSU offensive line has been so good. But if you get to him, get in his head, get that, get that clock moving quick. How in the world was that not dislodged? But yeah, I think you, you speed up that clock in his head, um, and I think you're gonna have some success. Scanning the field, it's Nussmeier. Receiver makes the catch, finding some room with the 25. Force out of bounds, but not before. The Tell you what, man, LSU's doing some, some really good in the open field, getting blocks downfield. Nice, accurate throw, but I think it's the one after the catch that really impresses me. And early in this game, you got to think that. Got him. Run it back. Run it back, turnage. Grabs the football. It's a turnover. Across midfield. The ten touchdown rebels on the scoop and score. That's how you end the half right there, ladies and gentlemen. Should have ran around for four more seconds. Hell yeah. So an important touchdown just before halftime. Not much time for the opposing offense to try to answer before the break. Bring it out. Yeah. Power <laughs> banks. So it's first down, but they'll just take it. Looks like the offense is content to run out the clock here and just take it to intermission. And that will do it. What a what a first half. Let's see that on Saturday. Thanks so much, guys, and I need not tell you, rivalry games always bring out a ton of emotion, and no surprise, we saw just that in the first half today. All right, let's get the second half going now. The kickoff team is out there. He's going to return it from near the goal line. And he stopped at the 20. All right. Tried to make something happen. That's good coverage there. And the powerful Ole Miss offense is back out on the field. They take the field with serious momentum. Take that crowd out of it, baby. So far, and they keep it going. Caught in the backfield. It's Amos. Get off me. Yeah, here. After a decent game. One thing I love about this bat is how he gets involved in the passing game. This Dart's got to Dart's got to be sharp Saturday. We haven't talked about that yet. He was shotgun running play call. He would probably tell you that. He didn't have his best game Saturday. He didn't really need to have his best game. Look, I, we talked about that on the show, too, where the game was in hand, and Ole Miss kind of threw it in cruise control second half. Didn't really need to score, but he missed some, some open throws, a lot of chances to really run that score up on Saturday. Missed Juice Wells wide open in the end zone. Looking to throw. It's dark. Gets rid of it on the move. If Dart is sharp Saturday, it'll it'll be a long day for LSU. Because I don't think LSU can go blow for blow just because of how good the Ole Miss defense is. So that's the recipe for uh, some big-time success for Ole Miss. Just go out and be sharp. And he'll set up to throw Oh, come on, Juice. Juice dropped one last week, too. He could have had potentially three touchdown catches. That would have been the hell, a hell of a homecoming. Move those chains. Get to a third down. You got to throw the football. This is where you trust. All right, Priest Corn, over route. An accurate throw. Let's get Dad in the end zone. Keep working that clock. Oh, it is incomplete. He flat out dropped what would have been a touchdown. Second down coming up now. It was a little late on my part. Good play on the ball there by the D. Got him. Touchdown, Ole Miss. And the beatdown continues. And momentum really building. Now, Kirk, this one... Hit the exit, bitches. And that's the last thing you want to do in a rivalry game. Not just lose the game, but get embarrassed. Man, you got to 
Go ahead and beat the traffic. Get out of here. Absolute murder. Call the police. Tell you what, man. Kickoff team ain't nothing to play with on this game. Yep, not gonna work. Stock right there at the line, no game. Trying to get cute. So physical against the run. These guys have not been able to do anything on the ground. It's because of that defensive line and those linebackers taking away the run game. Great play, Kari. A lot of contact, no flag brings up third. No flag. Kidding me? PBU, baby. PBU. Good coverage. They going for it? Wow. Coward. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> Run it. Good job of the defender to break that up. Flatten that this out, man. Outstanding job by this defender being in phase against this receiver. And to be tight in the screen. I haven't tried this play yet. Tips it up into the air. The offense catches a break that that ball's not intercepted. Grab behind the line. It's pre scoring. All right. Probably run that with Daquan would be a little better. I like this halfback direct it's with Amos. It should be with Bentley. But. Sometimes it sounds simple, but it's tough to execute. This time we have good recognition by the quarterback, and he gets it down to the tight end. No mercy. It's probably something Kiffin would do anyway, right? Off the play fake, he'll look to throw it. He's looking deep here. The pass is intercepted as he throws into double coverage that time. Now look at the return after the interception. Sets the offense up in good shape. That's fine. Took a shot. Everybody relax. Over here in the second half to get themselves back in the game. They get the interception. Now can their offense come up with a way to cut into the Great play. Great turn is all over the field in this game. Experienced players, man. Guys play a lot of football. Not phased. <laughs> Getting his receivers killed. From the shotgun, an inside handoff. They'll stop him behind the line for a loss of one. That's not going to work. Another call and another bad result for this offense. Kind of a microcosm of how this entire football game is gone. They're just trying to bleed yeah. the clock and get out of here. Nothing working at all. Off play action. He's looking to throw. Nowhere to go. Nobody open. Excellent coverage. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it, coach suggestion. You're not going to bait me into going man coverage and get burned. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're cooking now. That's two for Kari Coleman. Utah. Give me two. This one back. They're trying to work themselves back into this game here in the second half, and the defense comes up with a big turnover that could be. The oh come on! Offense. Kidding me? Offense Run that again? I don't care. Harold Perkins, you can fuck off with that. After the incompletion on first down, we're going to throw it again. Trying to create outside the pocket now. Didn't see anybody open. Just throws it away. That's not going to bring up third right. down. The Back to the basics. What do you expect him to do? He can't force the ball into traffic and potentially throw the interception. Does a good job of getting out of the pocket, away from the pressure, and just throw the ball away. See what happens on this next down. Ooh. It's incomplete. They weren't afraid to let it fly, but it brings up a fourth down. 
Boy, this quarterback is really rolling the dice out here today. Remember, he threw an interception the last time they had the ball. I thought he might learn from that, but instead he comes out throwing it into coverage again. Somehow catches a break on this tip ball. If this one was an interception, he better tighten up his decision making. It's going to cost him. All right, we're going to do man coverage. Let's see what happens. To go for it does not pan out. Great spot to start this drive for the offense. Going to press. Press. Rolling here to start the drive. Good coverage. Tackle made after the completion. Here comes a crucial second down play. Every yard tough to find out here in the red zone. Running back with the football. Got space looking to score. Tackle just on the line at the one. What a run. Defense clearly setting up to stuff the run here. First and goal, handoff. Yeah. That is just not open for business today. Well, they keep trying to run the football, and they keep getting dominated at the line of scrimmage. That has been a theme throughout this entire game. We've talked about it earlier in the game. Ah. That's all right. That was on me. In real life, we would play field position, and we would have punted it. Would have made them earn it. Getting greedy. Again, they tack on the extra point. Here's the kickoff team now. Set to boot this one away. They'll return it from inside the five. They stop at the 20. Tried to make something happen, but that's good coverage there. Here's the first play of the drive at the 20 yard line. It's a shotgun run call. They stop and play. Lean on him a bit here. Check out the quarterback All right. This has been a terrific duel. Both guys put on a show so far today. Up two scores. Let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and move the sticks. Let's start to uh, really shorten the game here. They get him down, but the game moves the ball up to the 36. You know, I'd say this run is pretty emblematic of what we've seen all day long. No matter what they've done on offense, the guys up front have controlled the line of scrimmage. They've given a quarterback Good run. To the they've been able to run, really, whatever they've wanted to. That's why the points are clock going. Right now, the psyche of this offense is war and control, and we can do whatever This is honestly kind of how the game, at least score-wise, Saturday could be. quickly down the field. Could be kind of similar. On any play call, when it's properly executed, it can go to the house for a touchdown. But the runs that really make a game plan work are the ones where you get just what you need. And he barely got the first down, but he got it. And the broken tackle there produces a solid game. Especially if Ole Miss, if Ole Miss gets somebody on Saturday. At times he's had to be patient. Toting it like we are on this game right here. Not on that play, but. Amos has got close to 100 yards in darts, been efficient, over 200 yards passing, a couple touchdowns. I think that's... Fourth, come on. Yeah. Challenging that spot. Are you kidding me? Hold on a second. There's a timeout on the field. The coach wants the officials to take another look at that one. Thinks he might get an overturn. So the challenge doesn't oh. work. That'll cost the head coach a timeout. Piss on that. We'll see if that comes into play later in the ball game. We're on a QB sneak on the new game. Let's see how it is. Time for perhaps one more play before we hit the two minute warning. Oh, I love that. Let's go ahead and just dive forward. And that's the two minute warning. And this offense looking to run out the clock and secure an I do. impressive it's win. Interesting today. how they say two minute warning on this game, but in in real life, they, they want to say the two minute timeout. That's a nice tackle there by the senior. Over 100 yards for your boy. What a game. 
and the defense just won the battle up front at the line of scrimmage. Try to lull him asleep with the run here and then maybe take a shot. It's really solid defense on that play. Defense stops him, but that's a solid game. All right, shot play. I know this defense worked very hard at halftime to come up with answers on how to try to slow down this running back after the big first half. He's already nope. at it again. First down. We'll slips. take it. It's Amos. They've got him, but that completion good enough for first down yardage. All right. Boy, this offensive line, you got to tip your cap. They've done everything you would ask of them in taking care of this quarterback. They do it again here on third down. Let's try it here. With that lead, you know the pressure's coming, and they deliver to the air. It's dark. There's a shot toward the end zone. Intercepted <laughs> in the end zone. That's all right. Not much on the return, but they create the turnover. That's just a poor decision by the offensive coordinator and the quarterback working with Oh, the relax. I was trying to run it up. Instead, throws it into coverage. Now they get a chance to get right back in the game. No, they don't. And a short pitch and catch to the tight end. A late timeout taken just four seconds on the clock. Second oh, let's try to get one more set. One more set. Quarterback looking to connect with the receiver here. Final minutes here. They'll throw it deep downfield. And that last pass falls incomplete. That will do That'll it. That'll do it. There might not be a Another edition of Ole Miss Spirit Twitch stream as the Rebels 35 LSU 14. Probably could be like that on Saturday. Um, Magnolia Bowl 630 ABC. Stay locked in. OmSpirit.com. We will have all the coverage leading up to it. Jackson Dart still through 222, four touchdowns. That's gonna that's gonna play nice. Let's we'll see if uh, you're trying to get back in the Heisman race. Um, dominant game though for the Rebs. Down in Baton Rouge, trying to go for uh, the first win since 2008, since I was in undergrad. So um, I think Ole Miss gets it done. Um, yeah, we got to hit that line coming out, uh, and then we'll have uh, more coverage heading to Saturday. So, appreciate everybody tuning in on the Twitch stream, um, and uh, we will have this up on YouTube for your viewing pleasure afterwards. So, until next time, we out of here.